Hello friends, YouTube community, vinyl community, hope everyone's doing really well. I'm doing okay, and this is just going to be another recent vinyl finds video. Happy to do one of these. It's been a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks since I've last done one. Didn't seem like a lot of records were piling up, and then all of a sudden I found quite a few. So I'm just going to get right into it, because there's kind of a lot. More than I thought I would have for a video. And the key here is these were all like really cheap. Nothing was over $4, which is really nice. Always happy to pick up stuff when it's cheap. And some were actually just like two or three. So I'm just going to show these pretty quick. And I've heard, I think, almost all of these, so I can comment on a little bit of them. Some of them are really, really good. And I'm going to go chronologically just because I'm kind of weird. I like to do that. So first things first, this was a really nice find. This is Thelonious Monk, Mysterioso. It's a live album, and it's from 1965, I think. This is actually mono copy. A little bit of ring wear here, but the record is really clean. And it's an original 2i label thingy. Only only thing that's kind of weird is that it's not one complete concert. Every track is... There's a, well, a couple tracks from Jazz Workshop in San Francisco, a couple from The Village Gate, there's one from Tokyo, Japan, but Thelonious Monk doesn't really have any bad songs, I just realized. If you like, you've got Well You Needn't, Mysterioso, Light Blue, Bemsha Swing, Evidence, and then some covers. And the band is, like, anything on Columbia Records is going to have Charlie Rouse, who is, like, the perfect sax player for Monk. Larry Gale's on bass, Ben Riley on drums. So you, re you really can't go wrong with Thelonious Monk. He might be the one guy that I would buy, like, anything from, because he's, he's just that good. Moving right along, here's another one, uh, another live album, Aretha in Paris, Aretha Franklin. Nothing too fancy here, just live renditions of... You know, the most famous songs, Respect, Chain of Fools, Dr. Feelgood. The only reason I got it is because it's just in such perfect shape for a record this old. It's actually got the shrink wrap still on. It's got the original Atlantic sleeve with all the pictures of other records. And then the record is just super mint. Really, really nice to pick this up. Even though I had the studio... I got, the, I got a lot of Aretha Franklin stuff. Um... And none of the songs here are, like, all that different from the studio albums, but still cool to have. Moving right along, here's Mose Allison. This one's kind of cool. I've been doing some thinking from 1968. Here's another one that turned up at the same place, the uh, this thrift store that I go to. Uh, turned up with um, the Aretha Franklin record and a couple others. Some of these were from record stores, some of these are thrifts, that's usually how it is. Anyway, I actually really like Mose Allison. I don't think he gets enough enough do because he's a uh, jazz piano pl He's not usually what you think of when you think of jazz piano, but he's got a pretty good style, really bluesy style, and, is, uh, and he sings, too. His singing voice is kind of cool, kind of that cool... I think he's from the country. Um, actually, I forget... Oh, there's my research skills at work. I forget where he's from, but I like Mose Allison. Waylon Jennings, this is, this is one I've been looking for for a while, and I'm happy to pick it up. I really like Waylon Jennings. I like the Outlaw Country stuff a lot. This one's Lonesome, Ownery, and Mean. I've listened to it. It's good. It sounds like Waylon Jennings. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. This next one I really, really liked a lot. Al Green, The Bell Album. This is really, really good stuff. Al, Al Green's another guy that has a lot of good music. And this one was sort of... He he was his producer was Willie Mitchell. All those early '70s albums uh, have a really cool sound uh, that Willie Mitchell produced. And then this one was sort of something different. This one he's actually playing like acoustic rhythm guitar on this one. Really really good though. And yeah, not much else to say. Really good. Some of it's really funky. The so the songs that are funky are still really good. Pat Metheny group, and this is with Lyle Mays, Mark Egan, some good ECM jazz. Pat Metheny's not my favorite, but, you know, he's solid. And I've got a couple other things by him. This was a dollar pickup, so always nice to get, you know, cheap jazz, even if it's not 
too great. Stevie Wonder, here's here's another one that just turned up really cheap, so I decided to take the plunge. It is pretty weird. It's a, I guess it's a soundtrack journey through the secret life of plants. It's not very uh, soulful. It's pretty. There's some weird like ambient synth things, and the songs are kind of boring. It's kind of weird. It's weird, and I don't like it too much. But I only listened to it once, so it might grow on me. And here's Simon and Garfunkel. And this here's another band. I pretty much own all their other stuff, at least all the 60s albums, and then this turned up for a dollar, so I figured, why not? This is the reunion concert, the concert in Central Park, 1981. Pretty good. I don't really like the solo Paul Simon songs, though, all that much. I love the, the 60s Simon and Garfunkel song, so, you know. Could have been better. Don't know why they picked so much. Like, half that record is solo Paul stuff. But, oh well. Not a big deal. Here's a soundtrack album, Das Boot. Who's this? Klaus Doldinger? Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, pretty good. It's like $3. Good soundtrack. Moving right along, this is Camel. This is, a, I like some of Camel's stuff. I really like um, The Snow Goose, and I like Mirage. I like those two albums. And I also have Moon Madness, that's the third one I have, which is pretty good. I don't like it quite as much. This one, definitely not their best, but it's not too bad. There's a lot of instrumental parts, which are good, but then there's a couple times where they try to be like, do some, they try to do some commercial pop songs, which aren't so good. It's a cool record, though. This is, um, at least condition-wise, it's pretty much perfect. And then this is, uh, yeah, this is a French import. This is kind of a cool deco label there. So, pretty good record there. Here's a really good record. This one I liked a lot. This is Game Theory, Big Shot Chronicles. Game Theory was a band led by Scott Miller, who pretty much wrote all the songs. And I guess you'd call them like Paisley Underground. It's like 80s college rock. Maybe a little bit like uh, The Replacements, kind of. Who else comes to mind? Maybe Dream Syndicate a little. I, I kind of like this band more than The Replacements, but it has... It has been a long time since I've heard, I've listened to them. So maybe I'm just overrating these guys and underrating the replacements. But yeah, if you like this, you know, 80s rock stuff, it's like kind of psychedelic, not really, but really good songwriting. Really good. And last but not least, Henry Threadgill. Really, really good jazz saxophone player. This is a sextet he had. Name of the record is called Rag, Bush, and All. I really like Henry Thread. Henry Threadgill was in a band called Air, but they were a sax, bass, drums uh, trio, and they did some cool stuff with like ragtime music. And this is a recording from what is it, 1988 or 89, and it's a sextet with uh, trumpet, sax, bass, trombone, uh, cello, bass, and drums. It's pretty cool. I've listened to it once, and I'm thinking it's gonna grow on me. There's some really weird stuff happening. And some really cool, you know, more traditional stuff happening too. So, really, really nice find. That was a $2 record, which is awesome to find. And that's that's it for the haul. I'll probably have another video in maybe a couple weeks, one or two weeks. Hopefully not. Hopefully I won't go too much time in between. But, you know, I probably will because things are always crazy. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Please leave comments, and I'm really enjoying this uh, whole community thing. I'm s feels like every day I'm subscribing to more and more people, so it's really cool. All right.